In this tutorial, we're going to look at OneNote Online and how we can use this as a note-taking tool. And before we begin, I want to reiterate that this is OneNote Online. It's not the OneNote that you can install on your computer and use without an internet connection. If there's enough interest from my audience, I may create a tutorial about that installable version of OneNote. But for now, I just want to show this OneNote online. It's a wonderful tool and it's available in the cloud for free for anyone that wants to use it. And the way you get to OneNote online is by just signing into your Microsoft account. Perhaps you sign into OneDrive.com or maybe you're at Outlook.com. Really, just about any Microsoft online tool, once you're signed into it, just look for this symbol here, which is the apps symbol, and look for OneNote and then just click it to go to it. Or alternatively, you can just type in OneNote.com and it should take you directly to your OneNote online account. Now that first time that you go there, you'll most likely be presented with a screen that looks like this. But if not, if you get a screen that looks more like this, all you have to do is click on the notebook that you're given to open it up. And then you'll get a similar view to what I'm showing. If for some reason you don't have a notebook, maybe it's been deleted or something like that, you could simply click here to create a new notebook. Now before I go any farther into OneNote, I want to tell you about the terminology that you're going to need as you use OneNote. And I want to go from the larger organizational units to the smaller ones. The largest organizational unit in OneNote is notebooks. You can create notebooks. And each notebook could represent a different aspect of your life. So for example, I'm going to create a school notebook. It's building that for me. So there's my school notebook. Now I'm going to click here to go back and get more notebooks. In addition to my notebook, my school notebook, I could add a family notebook, a business notebook, a work notebook, and on and on. I can have any number of different notebooks here in my account. So notebooks, they are the largest unit of organization in OneNote. I'm going to delete a couple of those. The next biggest unit of organization in OneNote is sections. So for example, if I were to go to my school notebook, I could create a section for each class period or each topic that I teach or that I'm studying if I'm a student. So I'll put one here for Spanish 1, click OK. Add another section, I'll call this Spanish 2, click OK, and so on. For a student, they might put math, science, English, history, and so forth. And the final unit of organization in OneNote is pages. So for example, in my Spanish 1 section, if I click on that, I can have pages that relate to Spanish 1. And I can just click here where it says Untitled Page. I can give it a title. I'll just call this Notes. I tap return or enter, and then I can type on the page and add my notes. But I could have a second page that's maybe a to-do list specifically for Spanish 1. And I could have another page for project ideas. So hopefully you get the point of this. So in OneNote, we have notebooks, and then each notebook can have sections, and each section can have pages. And then each page has the notes and the information that you type in it. So I'm going to go into the notes page for my Spanish 1 class. Because I want you to see that in addition to simply typing your notes here, typing information right on the page, you can also very easily insert all sorts of things. You can insert tables and then text or other information can be placed inside the table to organize it a little bit better. You can also insert pictures, including online pictures. You can search Bing to find those pictures and then just select them, click insert, and the pictures are added to your notebook. At that point, I can resize the picture if I would like to. I can also insert things like a file attachment. Let's say a colleague of mine sends me a Word document that's like a practice test or maybe a worksheet that I might want to use with my students. I could attach that to this note page simply by clicking File Attachment, choosing the file, and then selecting the actual file that I would like to attach, and then click Insert. So now this attachment is ready, and it's added to this page in this section of my notebook. Real quick, you can also add hyperlinks if you would like and even record audio. Let's look at that briefly. If you click record audio, you then have to allow access to your microphone. It is now recording my voice and adding it to this page. When I'm done, I click stop. 
and it's adding that audio recording into my page. So this really is a pretty robust, useful note-taking app. The last thing I wanted to point out about what you can insert into your pages is symbols. And these are particularly useful for math teachers and also foreign language teachers, I would say, and science as well. So I really like the variety of options that you have for inserting items into your OneNote pages. In addition to inserting text and audio and pictures, notice that you can also click just about anywhere on the note page and type. So I could type, listen to this audio. And then it's added basically as a text box and it's movable. As you can see, I can just click and drag and drop that where I want it to be. So I really like that option of clicking anywhere to add text in a text box. Now, in addition to all of those items that you can insert and being able to click and add text in a text box wherever you want, notice that there's also an option to draw. And this is really powerful. I can choose a pen, choose a color, and then I can just start drawing on the note page. Okay, so this is great for circling things, for drawing arrows, for underlining, things like that. There's also a highlighter, which is really nice. So you can highlight text that you want your coworkers to look at or your team members to look at. Speaking of team members or other people that you might be collaborating with, that really is one of the most powerful things about OneNote is it does facilitate sharing and collaborating on a notebook, on a section, or on a page. So let's look at how to set that up. Let's say I'd like to share this wonderful document with my coworkers or with my family or with other faculty members. All I have to do is go here to share, click that, and it tells me that right now it's shared only with me. But I can change that by inviting specific people to collaborate on this notebook with me. Notice it says invite people to school. That's my notebook. That's not the section. It's not the page. It's the entire notebook. So I could go in and put in some email addresses of contacts of mine. And then I could hit the comma key and add in additional email addresses. I can also add a note to them and then notice what it says, recipients can edit. So they will be able to not just view these pages, these sections, and this notebook called school, but they'll also be able to edit it. So just be sure that that's what you want. If you don't want them to edit it, you can click here and change it to recipients can only view. Also important is this, recipients don't need a Microsoft account. If you leave that as is, they can use their Gmail account, they can use Yahoo account or whatever other email they have and they can still view or edit your document. If you prefer though, you could require them to sign in with a Microsoft account. And if they don't have a Microsoft account, they would have to sign up for one in order to be able to access your notebook and then simply click share and they will be invited to work on this notebook. And they'll have the same basic access that I have. Notice that there's another great option here for get a link. If you click that, it generates a link that allows people to, in this case, edit my notebook. Or, if I prefer, only view the notebook. I'm gonna go with view the notebook. I click create link and it generates the link for me. So the nice thing about this is you could just copy this and you could email it out to your students or you could put it in your LMS, your learning management system, and then any student or parent who has access to your learning management system could click the link to access your notebook and either view or edit it, depending on what you allow them to do. So I'm gonna click close. So I think OneNote is a really robust note-taking application and I love that OneNote Online is a cloud-based tool. I can just sign on to any computer in the world, go to OneNote.com, sign in, and I can see my notebooks. And there are apps for mobile devices like cell phones and tablets, so you can access those same notes on your mobile devices. Now, many people see OneNote Online as being a competitor to Google Keep, and I can see that. There are some similarities. Also, Evernote would be a competitor to them. But honestly, I use both OneNote Online and Google Keep, and I use them both quite extensively. I think they each have their own strengths and weaknesses, but I think they're both really excellent programs. Thanks for watching. I hope that you found this tutorial to be useful. If you did, please click the like button below and consider connecting with me on my social media websites like Pinterest, Twitter, and Facebook. And definitely do subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos about technology for teachers and students. And watch for another video from me at least every Monday.